Good morning, everyone. So good to see you all gathered together here in the holy presence of the Father. This beautiful Sunday morning that the Lord has given to us uh, as we reflect together upon his word. Uh, I do want to express again my appreciation to the Council of Elders uh, who uh, continue to pray for me, my ministry, and pray for you and the church, and also walk with me as, uh, as we walk together in just serving the Lord. So oftentimes, wherever we go, we will find, you will find them with me. But uh, when we visit some people like uh, Reverend, a certain Reverend Patrick uh, Kiprop, who is not a member of this church, uh, tends to fear when they see uh, the elders. <coughs> but the elders are bearers of good news. And so we thank God for uh, all of them because they do bring good news. Uh, thank you very much. And if uh, the people uh, in the sound room, if just give me a little more monitor so that I don't strain my voice too much, that would be very helpful. Thank you very much. We had a wonderful time here yesterday in the morning. And uh, men who were not here, I think it was loaded online, wasn't it? It's loaded online. So men who are not here, please do listen. And women, if you want to know secretly, you can also listen uh, to what they actually had while we were here together. Some things that I think are, are very, very relevant and pertinent in the direction that we are going. We appreciate what the Lord is doing in Sitam Eldoret and continue to pray for God's grace and favor as you serve him here, raising up uh, the banner of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, to the members of the congregation, thank you for the support that you continue to give uh, to the ministry, uh, to all those who are involved in various aspects of the ministry. Please do continue. You are serving the Lord and your reward awaits in heaven uh, and also here on earth. And we also thank the Lord for the pastoral staff and uh, uh, Pastor Petronila, Pastor Patrick, uh, and uh, uh, my dear uh, senior pastor, uh, thank you very much, Pastor Buire, and you are uh, family members uh, who support you as you serve, and to all the staff members as well, God bless you very much. Those who are serving, serving in various committees, uh, uh, including the advisory, yes, you're getting it. Now that's it. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm getting my sound. Thank you. Uh, thank you very, very much. We appreciate you. And and uh, uh, give praise to God for what uh, he's doing here in Eldoreta. Now the subject that I was asked to share about, under normal circumstances, I prefer to do it uh, in training settings because uh, I actually need six hours to be able to cover that. And so we cannot cover that uh, in 40 minutes. So what I'm going to do is just give you a glimpse and whet your appetites so that uh, you may say this is a subject that I may want to investigate a little bit more on because uh, it's something I spend training people uh, I would do up to six hours uh, in, in, a, in a training setting rather than a, 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 in a place like this. An elder miner started us off on the subject in a very beautiful way by reading for us that great spiritual warfare psalm of Psalms 91 that speaks of God's protection, God's covering, and God walking with us. The terrors that come by night, the shikim, as the Hebrews used to call them, were actually sometimes viewed as demonic forces that would attack people at nighttime, but that the Lord will actually protect us even when the shitim would come, the terrors that come by night. And uh, every one of us here, regardless of our background, whether European or African, whether uh, uh, whichever community, that deeply embedded within our cultures are some things that actually are good, but there are also some things that are neutral, and then there are some things that are evil. Now, the things that are good, we are meant to retain, not to lose them at all. Hold them, whether the Western people would come and tell you your culture is not too good. The things that are good in our culture, let us retain them. But there are also some things in our culture which are neutral. They are neither good nor evil. Now, things that are neutral, neither good nor evil, let us redeem them and use them for good. 
retain, redeem. <clears throat> now, there are some things within our cultures uh, that actually are evil. And the things that are evil, they are evil because they are contrary to the word of God. We do not judge them based on other cultures. In other words, you do not judge the culture of one community based on the culture of the other community. You judge the cultures based on the word of God. Because the word of God is standard for us. So if there are things going on in one culture which are immoral, immoral in as far as the word of God is concerned. If there are things going on in culture which are evil and touching on the spirit world, not the word of God, but the spirit world, we judge them according to the word of the Lord. And when we judge them according to the word of the Lord, those ones we need to reject. So, retain the good, redeem the neutral, reject the evil. Now, as a result of living in our various cultures and communities, uh, we have deeply embedded within our mindset and our thoughts, in our subconsciousness, uh, some things that we don't even know we have until we are faced by situations. Because right from birth to death, in all our cultures, we are steeped with issues that are beyond us. And when there are issues beyond us, normally we would try to manipulate them or control them so that we are able to determine a certain required purpose and destiny. And so right from birth, the way children are born, the way children are named. Oh, can I provoke people here today? Now, in the traditional setting, we try to name in some community people who have gone before. And so we perpetuate a name, you name so-and-so, and you name so-and-so, and the idea is that almost close to the Hindu kind of reincarnation. We want the person to be reborn again, and they're reborn again, and they're reborn again in our cultures. In other cultures, traditionally among the law, the naming system would be very, very unique. You would actually put up a guard down, and you try to balance something on top of almost like a pin. And you'd be calling the different names of your ancestors. When the pin remains on top and does not taper, you call the child with that name. In marriages steeped with kind of cultural attitudes, uh, in rights of transitions, uh, and the cultures themselves as rights of transitions are not bad. But I'm talking of behind them where we actually invoke spirit powers or what I would call mystical spirit powers because we want to control our circumstance. We want to control the weather. We want to control my husband's love for me or my wife's love for me. And because we want to control them, we seek spiritual power, spirit powers that would enable us to manipulate these circumstances. We want to control our business so that our business would flourish. We want to control the money that we have so that we'll get more wealth. And we can't do that naturally. So in order to do that, we begin invoking spirit powers through various ways, whether we are joining the Freemasonry, whether we are going to the witch doctor, whether we are being washed by some certain kinds of, 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 of water, whether we are going to the lie born to read for us the intestine of a goat so that they may be able to determine for us these are the ways in which you can control the circumstances and the situation that is round about you. You're still there. This house is rather quiet on me. Ah, because people are beginning to ask questions. Now, when we go to that level where we begin getting engaged in that world, whether we are Christians or not Christians, 
but trying to invoke that world, whether through cultural practice that touches on on the spirit world, we say you are involved in occultism, the occult. And when you get involved into the occult world, a world that touch, touches on the evil spirits, that touches on uh, spiritual powers, that touches on witch doctors, that touches on... See, I don't know whether it's here in El Dorito, so in Nairobi, I see them, you find an uh, electricity pole. Mganga Mashuhuri. You have them here in El Dorito? <laughs> now, when you visit those characters, uh, what you are doing is uh, you are trying to manipulate your world. So in order to manipulate your world, you can't do it in a natural way. And because you can't do it in a natural way, you are invoking some supernatural powers to intervene. And the supernatural power you are invoking is not the power of the living God. It's the power of the other world. That power is occultic power. Now, when you do that, what you actually do is that you open a space, what we call a doorway, in your life. And that doorway becomes the entry point for some spiritual squatters who come to invade and live in a space where they should not live. But they come to occupy that space because they have getten, gotten an entry point in your life and in your territory. And as believers, we need to evict those spiritual squatters from the spaces where they have invaded in our lives. And that's the title of our message. Evicting spiritual squatters from our lives. A pastor friend of mine and I were praying in a house one evening with, he had just shared and praying a small group of people, 15 or so. When he made an altar call for those who wanted to get saved, a 13 year old girl came forward and as we prayed, she began to cry. Now I've seen some people wash away their sins with their own tears, although the sins have been washed away by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. But so moved by their sinfulness that she began to cry. Now, the pastor friend of mine, those days a young man pushed me over and said, pray with her. A young 13 year old thin girl the moment we began praying with her, she screamed. She said, I can see him, I can see him. He does not want me to be saved. He does not want me to be saved. That 13 year old girl required four strong adult men to hold her. If she threw her hand like this, you would stagger some kind of supernatural strength had gotten into her. She saw the spirit world. My wife and I are in a meeting in the USA, a place called Skoki. Someone had prayed for us and said, go attend this meeting. And we are not preaching. I'm seated behind, we're seated somewhere behind there. And lots of unusual things were happening in that meeting. Those were the days of laughing revival. Anyone ever heard of the laughing revival? Lots of unusual things were happening in that meeting. People were all over the floor, falling uh, under the power of God. Some of them, some of them uh, 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 laughing uh, because uh, uh, it was so funny. And I'm seated there when a white girl fell down on the ground. They were all over the floor. And I looked at her from where I was seated and I turned to my wife and I said, that one there is a demon. And my wife said, how do you know? 
I said, you'll see. I got up from my seat. I went over and I rebuked the spirit. She brought her hands to her face and spoke back to me with a male voice. She's mine. She's mine. I'll not let her go. All these two cases, it turned out that their parents had actually introduced them to the occult when they were children. In one of my pastoral responsibilities, I'm in the church when a woman brings her white husband, a gentleman from the UK, to see me. And they are in my office there when she says, my husband can't sleep at night. He's screaming all over. Sometimes uh, he seems to be fighting with some strength. So I got, began talking with him. Oh, no, talk with this white man. Talk, talk, talk. It turned out that the man was a black belt Tai Chi Kung Fu fighter. He could pick you with his hand and throw you over the wall there. He could break bricks with his bare hand. Black belt. But you see, there is a level of martial arts that is not empty. When you go to a certain level where you begin to empty your mind and your brain and you start levitating and getting to a higher level where you can even fly, that level is not empty. There is a spirit power behind some evil squatters that actually gives you that supernatural power. I got round from my seat. My office is upstairs, the secretary's office is down. I got round from my seat, went over to him. To him. I said, I'll pray with you. The moment I laid my hands upon him, he pushed the seat over, fell down on the floor, screamed and began writhing like a snake on the floor. That black belt. Tai Chi fighter had to cast out a demon out of him. Finished the service in church. As I like to do in most of the churches where I pastor, I give opportunity for people to be prayed for. A well-polished Woman walks over to me, well polished, high standard. She digs into her husband, her, 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 her handbag, brings out an object wrapped in tissue paper. And she's looking around behind her. She said, Pastor, I felt today I should give you this. So I received this. I said, what is it? And she says to me, because of some issues that were going on between me and my husband, I went to someone and asked how my husband could love me some more. And she's looking behind her because her husband is waiting in the car outside. She's looking behind her. So I decided today, I'll bring you this. Prayed with the lady, decided to take this outside, ask one of the church workers to bring me paraffin. I poured paraffin on this object, I set it on fire. I have no idea. It was not a living thing, but it was bleeding as we were burning it. The world in which we live in is not the only world that is in existence. 
beyond what we can smell, see, taste, or touch. It's another world just as real as the world that we are seeing with our eyes. The inhabitants of this world cannot be detected by modern scientific gadgets as x-ray, ultrasound, scanners, or even radar at all. John Milton captured this in 17th century when he wrote and said, when we sleep and when we wake, millions of unseen beings pass us by. You don't see them, but they are in existence. And we try to contact them. We try to contact them to help us walk through some of the situation uh, that we are walking through when they are difficult. Uh, we try to contact them through special individuals, uh, either called magicians uh, or witch doctors uh, or liborn or elders. Uh, we try to contact them through special places. Uh, we go either to sacred trees, uh, sacred mountains, uh, sacred rivers, uh, sacred lakes, uh, and try to placate them so that we would not have any problem problem at all. We go to shrines. We try to contact them through special objects that we have, whether it is a cowrie shell, whether it is amulets that we tie around our necks or around our waist. We try to contact them through certain kind of sacrifices, rituals, and ceremonies, whether it is lacerating our stomachs and someone putting some powders so that we have lines here or our arms. We try to get in touch with them so that we would be protected and we can manipulate what is happening to us and protect ourselves from being affected or infected by the objects that are happening to us that we cannot explain. It may be illness, it may be business, it may be education, it may be marriage, it may be love and relationship between spouses, it may be ordinary things, but sometimes we get engaged to the extent that when it comes to a problem, we begin saying things are happening like this because of the way we buried our father. Things are happening to us like this because of what our mother did. And that is a mindset of a group of people we call animists, people who are, which are coming from our background. And yet we are also importing some of those into the Christian circles uh, rather than adopting a biblical principle on dealing with issues like this. Uh, so that sometimes uh, in deliverance classes and lessons uh, that we have going on in our churches, uh, the difference uh, between what is taking place in those deliverance classes and lessons uh, and the traditional African religion is very narrow, very narrow. As I said, allow me to go to Revelation. The city of Pagamam or Pagasus, as sometimes it is called, in Asia Minor in Mysia. Beautiful large city with a hospital complex which was there. Boasted a library of over 200,000 books. But there was a sort of a union there, a kind of a pagan cathedral with a university town and a royal residence there. Currently referred to as Bagama in Turkey. It's actually in existence up to today. But the letter brings to us certain things about this city. Allow me just to mention this book is the book of Revelation being written by John to the churches which were around Asia Minor as he writes from the Isle of Patmos, the island of Patmos, trying to communicate with these churches that were experiencing challenges and difficulties. And he begins to write to them. And what does he say in verse 13 to this church? Number one, he talks about the seat of Satan. When this chapter or this letter to the church is introduced, immediately we begin to see we are in a warfare situation. How? We begin to say the speaker introduces himself as the one with the sharp two-edged sword. Ah, swords were not for greetings. Swords were not for peaceful times. The moment you saw one with a sword, you knew there was battle coming. 
You knew there was danger. You knew there was a fight. And he introduces himself as the one with the two-edged sword in as far as the church which was in Pergamum is concerned, pointing out to the church there is a battle going on in your middle. There is a warfare going on. There is grievous things that are happening among you. And these things are happening because in your midst you live in a space that can only be referred to as where Satan dwells. Where the seat of Satan is. The city was addicted to idolatry. It had several statues which had been raised up as altars for Zeus, a 40 feet high statue which had been raised up in this city. The city was given up to building of temples of various gods. The god Athena, Apollo, Asclepius, Dionysus, Aphrodite, all these gods were being worshipped in the city of Pergamum. The city was given over to Asclepolis that I've referred to. This was a special god that actually would bring a treatment to people. It had high priest who would sleep at night and almost like Loliondo kind of setting. People would come and gather and in the night this God would reveal a healing concerning an individual and in the morning the high priest would come to you and say while we were sleeping we got a dream about you. This is what you need to do and you will recover using occultic demonic power in order to bring about a healing. The city had the worship of individuals whom the Bible can only refer to as those who have given heed to Balaam, the son of Beho, who deceived Balak. Later on, the Bible refers to Balaam, the son of Beho, that he was a witch, a diviner. You know those diviners? A senior person in the country one day invited me to his house. Told me there's a group coming to pray with me and I want you to be there. So I went to the house of this senior person in the country. And uh, there was a group there praying. And he had told me to come and judge, see what, how they are praying. And they were in a circle, we are with them in a circle. We sang some familiar choruses, started to pray familiar. In the middle of prayers, they began prophesying. Almost each person giving a prophecy, this one gives a prophecy, this one gives a prophecy. Then they, that session stopped. Then they went to second session. One of them went nearby and they had a sack full of salt. And they brought the salt and poured it uh, on the floor. And a young girl, maybe 20 years old, fell down on the ground. And she began writing. Her eyes closed, but she's writing things on the floor. She would write and write, uh, and the others are reading what she's writing. She write and write, uh, and the others are reading. Wives again, writes and writes on the, on the salt. I told the senior person, divination. This is not Christianity. This is divination. Divination. These are the kind of things that were taking place in this city. But I need on to point out to you that the Bible does not say the Christians who leave need to run away. The Bible points out that the determination was that the Christians who were actually living in this city needed to remain there and they are being expected to be overcomers. And they are being told, he who overcomes. 
And they were not overcoming with their own strength or their own ability. They were overcoming because there was one who actually was standing there with his sword removed. The Lord Jesus Christ who was fighting the battle on their behalf so that they would actually experience victory and overcome for the glory and the honor of God. Our enemy is not politicians, not non-Christians, not people of other faiths, not Hollywood cinema and films. Our enemy is the adversary, the devil, who uses evil forces that are called demons, who sometimes inhabit individuals and occupy those spaces in the lives of individuals because we have created doorways, including doorways in the area of sex, Senior person in our organization transferred to work in a certain country. She got in touch with a man who was coming from West Africa, got into a relationship, became intimate with him. She realized this relationship is headed nowhere. I'm leaving this man. The man said, you can't leave me. No woman leaves me. You can't leave me. So she said, the best way for me to leave, seek for transfer back home. She comes to Kenya. She starts getting attacked. Sometimes a paralyzing attack. She would be rushed to hospital, paralyzed. And she would be hearing voices. In one of those occasions in hospital, I think she'd heard about me. She says, call Pastor Callisto, call Pastor Callisto, call Pastor Callisto. They was to say, who is Pastor Callisto? <laughs> Finally, they managed to bring her to church. I was not there. Pastor prayed with her, made an appointment for her to come back. And that day, as I prayed with this lady, fell down, and she began speaking in a West African language. And she was not in West Africa, a West African language. A spirit took control over her. So when we open doorways, ladies and gentlemen, then we give them a kind of a license to squat in our space. And we've got to seal every doorway that is there. The doorway of witchcraft, the doorway of charms, the doorway of uh, uh, diviners, the doorway of ancestral worship and engagement in things that do not honor the Lord, the doorway of illicit sexual activities, the doorway of pornography, young people. I could give you examples even that. Those doorways are doorways we've got to seal so that we do not allow a doorway for the enemy to come in and attack us. But if you're walking faithfully with the Lord, ah, my time is out. <laughs> Although you've given me 10 more minutes, <laughs> but my time is out. If you're walking faithfully with the Lord, can I just share with you some thoughts here? And I cannot finish everything that I have uh, in this area of uh, sharing. Let me just share with you some very uh, brief thoughts here. If you're faithfully walking with the Lord, I have studied my Bible right from the book of Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation, looking at it with only one sight, looking at matters to do with spiritual warfare and how Christians respond to such things. And I have noticed something amazing. Moments when Christians have interacted with demonic powers. We start with Moses and Janice and Jambres in Exodus chapter 7 and chapter 8. Janice and Jambres were the magicians who were dissuading Pharaoh from following the words of, uh, of, of Moses. 
And when we read, we discovered that there is, let me make that statement very loudly. I discovered that there is nowhere in the Bible where a faithful believer who walked faithfully with God and never opened doorway suffered in the hands of a magician, a witch doctor, a diviner, or anyone like that. There is nowhere in the Bible. It is the opposite. That whenever a believer, an Old Testament believer, a New Testament believer interacted with magicians, diviners, witch doctors, it is the diviners, magicians, and witch doctors who suffered because of the believer, but never the opposite. Go to Balaam and the children of Israel. I cannot curse those whom God has blessed. Numbers 23. Go to Samuel uh, uh, and, and the king and the witch. First Samuel chapter 28. Go to Daniel and the sorcerer. By the way, let me just mention this. Some of you say, the office where I'm working, Pastor Bishop, you don't know the office where I'm working. What do I mean? What do I mean now? Someone has this, another person has that. Do you know who the colleagues of Daniel were on a day-by-day -day basis? The Bible says that Daniel's colleagues were astrologers, magicians, witch doctors, and every morning Daniel would stroll into that office, and next door is a magician, hi colleague, and Daniel would go and sit down, and he would not be troubled or fearing at all, because Daniel knew his God, and so he was victorious in the midst of circumstances like that. Simon Peter and Simon the magician controlling a whole community like a lie born controlling the community of Samaria. He encounters Simon Peter. Ah, it is not Simon Peter who had a problem. Simon Peter turns to him, if you do not repent, worse things will come upon you. And this man shrinks him back into his skin and says, please pray for me, please pray for me. Paul and a magician called Elimus. Paul turns to that magician and say, you, you son of the devil, you who contravenes the ways of the Lord, from now on you'll be blind. It is not Paul who is suffering in the hands of the magician. So when the children of uh, 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 the, the believers in Pagamam are being told, you are where the seat of Satan is, they are not being told that to scare them. They are not being told that so that they would run away. They are being told that they may know, even though I am where the seat of Satan is, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Therefore, I can overcome regardless of the challenges that would come my way. So don't allow yourself to be controlled by fear. For he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of a sound mind. Why? Because Jesus has overcome for us. There was a showdown on the cross the day the Lord Jesus Christ died. As a result of that showdown recorded to us, the Bible says he disarmed powers and principalities and authorities and made a public show of them, having triumphed through them on the cross. So it's not our own victory. We do not need to control or manipulate our environment or our circumstances. We need to just plug in into the sources of God and plug in into the power of God and remain plugged in into the power of God. And as a result of that, we would be able to evict every demonic activity and power that would attempt to attack us. Martin Luther woke up in the middle of the night because he had heard some noise in his bedroom. And he turned to look to 
towards the door. And there is the shape of Satan standing over his door at night. And Martin Luther says, oh, it's just you. And he turns back and goes to sleep. <laughs> goes to sleep. That's a person who knows their position in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a person who knows Christ has conquered for us. That's a person who knows the terror that come by night will not affect me at all because I'm shielded and covered by the presence of the Father. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. Evict every demonic activity. And if you hear and they're troubling you and giving you problems, you are not sleeping. You are saying, it's because of my mistake. I opened a doorway in my life that you can actually come to the Lord and say, God, forgive me. I recant. I reject this involvement and allow you to take over possession of my life and be the source of my life. My time is out. Let me conclude with a story from my mother. My mother is an old saint. One of these old saints, she's 80 something years old, loves the Lord. And sometimes where we come from, people practice witchcraft. And one of the ways they do that is they, they, they tie some things around eggs and uh, they put it either at your doorstep or they put it uh, uh, somewhere where you'll meet it. Uh, anyone knows what I'm talking about? I can see a number of heads nodding here. Uh, <laughs> Now that says, and, and when people see that, they become affected. I'll post my mother's story and tell another story. <laughs> a man wakes up in the morning, I'll come to that. A man wakes up in the morning. And the previous evening is drizzling. A mother gets out and invites children. Children, please come home because come into the house because it is raining. And the children come in the house. And the first person to open the door in the morning is this man. And right in front of his door is a frog with a stick going through the back, like a barbecued frog, right in front of his door. And he begins to shake. And he starts telling his wife things are not good. Look what I've found. And he rushes to check with the relevant authorities who can read those kinds of things. And he's given some word this and that has happened. And in two weeks time, that man is dead. And during the funeral service, People are lamenting and people are saying how oh, he was killed, he was killed. And the children turns to the mother and said, Mom, what actually killed dad? And the mother said, you remember the night I called you home in the evening? The following morning, your father found someone had dropped witchcraft, a frog with a stick on its back right in front of her door. The children turn to the mother, but mommy, we were the ones who were playing with that frog out there and when you called us, we dropped it there. <laughs> what killed that man? Fear, fear, fear. And there are many of us who are being killed by fear because we are afraid rather than boldness and courage. So my mother wakes up and there, some eggs and things around them. And she takes the egg, goes into the house, fries the egg and thanks God for the breakfast and is, enjoys the egg. I'm giving you courage. 
I'm telling you, there is a greater power that operates in us. A power that we do not fear witchcraft. There are some of you who are not going to your home because of your relative there. You are not visiting your village. If you drive there, you will not reach back to your city. When you are going back, you will not arrive in Eldorado. There are some of you who believe you are not getting married. Who believes it is what happened in your uncle's home that is making you keep on having challenges in your marriage. There are some of you who are being held back by fear and circumstances and through doorways you have allowed the evil one and yet I want to affirm to you that greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. My time is out. Let's pray together. Please rise up in the presence of the Father. Come on, just respond to God. You're a child of God. You belong to God. Jesus Christ has died for you. You are victorious in the name of the Lord. You are covered in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are surrounded like the mountains surround Jerusalem. He set a hedge of fire around about you that the evil one cannot be able to penetrate. He is dwelling in your heart through his Holy Spirit. He's raised you up to be seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus our Lord. He speaks for through you so that circumstances and situations would not control you. Rather, through the power of the Holy Spirit, you would be the one who is victorious against principalities and powers. Thank you, Lord. Bless your holy name. We honor you, Lord. We give you praise. We adore you, Lord. We thank you that you're working on our behalf. We thank you that you've raised us. We thank you that you're the Lord God who is at work in order to honor and glorify yourself. Thank you for the victory. Even when we dwell in a world occupied by Satan. We will not fear for you are with us Lord. You are with us. You are giving us the victory. You are giving us the victory over our circumstances. Victory over our situations. Over those problems. We will not seek answers from the witch doctors. We will not seek answers from diviners. We will turn to the living God. We are covered in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you. We thank you that you are triumphing over all the powers of the enemy. In the name name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive the praise. Receive the glory. Receive the honor. We thank you our Father. We bless your holy name. And as we close, perhaps there are some of us who say, Bishop, what's happening to me? I can only explain it in terms of the demonic. And I require prayer. Some of you may not be sleeping because there are some things that are disturbing you. Or circumstances around your life are such that you think, what I'm going through, this one has got to be some powers. And you'd want us to close as we pray for you. Please just come and stand here. We'll make a very quick prayer. And God will do a quick work. Even if it is an illness, a sickness that you think, this kind of sickness has only come from Satan. Because of the way you've been struggling and you're saying, please pray with me. Just come and stand with me here in the very presence of the Lord. Come and stand here. We're going to quickly make a prayer. Please just come. If you're there and you're challenged, a young person, you have an addiction, a habit that you've been struggling to break. And you're thinking this is none other than uh, demonic in nature. Please come. Please come. Just come and stand with us in the very holy presence of the Lord. And the elders are here. We're going just to love you and pray with you very, very quickly as we commend you into the hands of the Father. The Father loves you. The Father cares for you. It's a loving time, a time to love one another, love you, and let you just experience the healing touch of God and the loving care of the Father. Just come, just come, and let the Lord minister to you. Don't fear. Don't hold back. Let the Lord minister to you as the pastoral team and the elders just minister and pray to you in the name of Jesus. Receive your liberty. Father, I pray for this individuals who have come before your presence I ask you to stretch out your hands upon each and every one of them I pray for deliverance. I take authority over powers and principalities, over every demonic activity from their lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, whether it is illness, I want to pray for healing in Jesus' name. Oh God, where they have opened the doorway, we completely seal that doorway right now in the name of Jesus. And we release the presence of the Father to minister to them right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let deliverance flow in Jesus' name. 
Jesus' name, come through for each and every one of them. May you be honored and may you be glorified. We thank you and we bless you. We give you praise. We give you glory, our Father. Receive the praise. Receive the glory. Honor and majesty be to your name. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, our Father. Continue to minister to your people, Lord. In the name of Jesus, receive the praise. 